Hello everyone, and welcome back to the next episode of Earl Donald of Bukan, where we play as Donald Trump in the medieval era. In the last episode, we set up our council, and we discovered that our chancellor isn't that good, and neither is our steward, but our spymaster, our court chaplain, and our marshal are quite good. So, this early part of the game, when you're first starting out, does take a while, because there is lots of stuff to set up. We got through most of it in the last episode, but now let's have a look at our vassals. So, remember I said before that we had a city and a bishopric, or a church, under us? Well, here are the people in charge. We have the mayor of Aberdeen. Ah, so my geography was actually quite correct. This is indeed the city of Aberdeen. Anyway, we have a mayor who runs the city. Mayor Fingal of Aberdeen of House Graham. Now I'm pretty sure, yes, the families of your mayors are randomly generated. They are... he has no one else in his family. At all. Or at least, no one important. As you can see, his opinion of us is 21. The opinion goes from minus 100 to plus 100. And so, as you can see here, we're in the positive. He likes us. He likes us because our personal diplomacy is quite good. Ah, so I guess we were good at negotiating with Mr. Fingal over here. He likes us because of gavel kind succession, because it means the titles are separated out, and so his liege, me, doesn't get too powerful. He likes me also because he's, he's my... He's, he's my steward. And my technology also helps. So if I go to technology, you can see we have noble customs here. And each level improves a feudal vassal's opinion of us. No, sorry, I'm lying. We do have noble customs, but we also have popular customs. And it's popular customs that's improving the city vassal opinion. I guess because we arrange festivals of that sort in the city. So because he likes us, he's paying us tax. He's paying us 10 gold every month. It's not a refresh there, because I haven't started the clock yet. But we also have Bishop Indolf Glassu, also randomly generated family. He's in charge of the church. But as you can see, He's not paying us any taxes, he's paying taxes to the Pope. And the reason for that is, here's his opinion of the Pope. Here's his opinion of us. His opinion of the Pope is higher than his opinion of us. So his taxes are going to the Pope. And we don't want that, we want this guy's money. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go to the council, I'm going to go to my court chaplain, and I'm going to go to improve religious relations. As you can see there, have your court chaplain lead a religious delegation to discuss matters of faith with the local clergy. So, the chance that he will improve relations with the priest is 21.37% yearly. The chance that he will decrease relations between the priest and the Pope is 16.02. And both of those help us, so we're going to get him to do that. Can we not get him to do that? Oh, it looks like we can't get him to do that in our own county. Oh, that's a shame. I thought you could do that. Never mind then, we'll find another way. We can also improve relations by awarding honorary titles. So we can make one of our vassals master of the horse. This will increase their opinion of us by five. Same with all of these titles. Now, I like to roleplay a bit. High Almoner is someone who's religious, someone who hands out the arms, and it seems odd to just give this to a random mayor and not a bishop. So I do like to roleplay that. So let's see, in order to make him like us more than the Pope, we have to, this has to be above 49. So that's a difference of about 18. We have to get 18 more opinion. Now, handing an honorary title out will only increase by 5, so there is actually no point doing that. 
So we're actually just going to leave that for now. So let's have a look at our court. These are just random people. There is a random lowborn 16 year old here. She's humble. She likes books. She's an erudite. She's shy and she's temperate. Moderation. We also have this 36 year old. Cynical, charitable, craven and shy. Our spymaster, our chancellor. And this, uh, oh! Yeah, I forgot. When you create a custom ruler and you replace the historical guy, the actual historical guy becomes part of your court. So we have this random 15 year old in our court, which I don't know what I'm going to do with him. Hmm. He's just, he's stubborn, he's patient, and he's paranoid. I don't know what I'll, I don't know what I'll do with him. Anyway. These people don't like us. She doesn't like me because I don't care about justice. He doesn't like me because I don't care about justice and he's charitable and I'm greedy. Anyway. So, what's the next stage? Finding a wife. So we can go here and we can look for wives. Now the gripe I seem to have with this is that it chooses people for you that are halfway across the world. And if you're just a, you know, a random count or earl in Scotland, why are you marrying someone from Germany, right, or someone from Italy? So that's one gripe I have. So let's look at the people around us. Let's look at the king, King Malcolm III. He has no daughters, so we're not going to be able to do that. Let's look at the people around us. Now remember before, I said that we are the du jour Duchy of Marais. Now what du jour means is by law. By law, Bukan is part of the Duchy of Marais. But sometime in the past, evidently, the king conquered Bukan from the Duke of Marais and then gave it to us or gave it to our predecessor. So we are no longer under the Duchy of Marais. But technically the Duke can still be like, you know, you're supposed to be under me, by law. So that's what de jour means. So, does he have any daughters? No, he does have a sister, but the sister's already married. And we can't kill him off, so no point doing that. Who else is under the king? He must have some other counts under him. Yes, he has the Earl. I'll tell you what. Let's go to direct vassals map mode. This will tell us who's under who. Or not. As you can see, direct vassals, there's the Duchy of Marais. There's a folly. Yes, he's directly under the king. So is he. So is the Earl of Clydesdale. Now, Lothian himself is a duke. Oh, sorry, he is under the Duke of Lothian. Also the Duke of Lothian. So there are two duchies. There's the Duchy of Marais, and there's the Duchy of Lothian. So if you, we do go into direct vassals, there's the Duchy of Lothian, there's the Duchy of Marais, and the, these counts are under the king. So a Foley, Earl Malmer of Athol, he has a strong claim on the Kingdom of Scotland. Unmarried, same age as us, stubborn, zealous, proud and kind. It's an odd mix. He's zealous and he's proud, but he's also kind, he's also a legitimised bastard and he's also a theologian. He's under the king. Earl Murdoch of Strathine is our next guy. He's also an earl under the king. He has one son. He's temperate, he's diligent, he's honest, and he goes, but he also gets angry if he really has a hot temper. Those are some pretty good stats. And we also have Earl Dull Duff of Fief. 
Macadoob. Macado? Macadoo? I don't know how you pronounce that. Humble, kind, cynical, and gluttonous. Okay, pretty decent guy. He has the county of Fifi. So, what you didn't notice is while I was going through these guys, I was looking down here and I found that none of these guys have any daughters. Apart from the Duke of Lothian himself. He, and his eldest daughter is four years old, so that's not going to work. So once again, we are without a wife, unless this guy has a daughter. No, I already looked at him. So, we're without a local wife. So let's have a look at arranged marriage. Let's see. We want someone who will have children. So I'll just type must fall there. As you can see, we do have this Catalonian woman. But she's all the way down there. And I don't think it would be realistic for us to travel all the way down here to find a wife. It might be more realistic for us to go to Wales. Well, the stats are terrible. When you're finding a wife, you need good traits and you're looking for good stats, because those stats will pass down to your children. Yeah, this list is basically our entire choice of people who will marry us. Let's see, there's this, there is this 14-year-old. Norman girl. She's in the Duchy of Apulia at the moment. She's all the way down there. Uh, I don't like being unrealistic with this. She is... where is she? She's in Wales. I think Wales is close enough for us. So let's see. I think there is two people from Wales here. Yes, there's Hunid and there's Gwen Lillian. Which one do we want? Kind, lustful, just, and craven. And she is envious, stubborn, brave, but lustful. He's also a tough soldier. Hmm, so which one? They're both 24 years old. Four, six, three, seven, and a four. A four, one, four, zero, and an eight. Yeah, I think she will be better, so let's pick her. As you can see, this will give us a non-aggression pact with the King of Powers, of Powys, which is down here. Wales is in a proper country yet. It's split up. Propose that Earl Donald and Hunid get married. As an Earl, Donald would gain three prestige from marrying into House Mephrafel and a hundred for marrying the relative of a king. And I, th I think this will do, so let's do that. Let's send out that marriage proposal. And I think that's it for now, so tell you what, why don't we start the clock? Let's see what happens. Go on two speed for now. Hunid and Earl Donald are getting married. We can collect a royal aid duty to pay for the ceremonies. Let's see, what would Donald Trump do? We can pick, yes, it is everyone's concern, and get, you know, a dowry. Or we can get prestige. It's not a lot. 10 gold and 13 prestige. We aren't marrying someone really good. He's greedy and he's wroth. Yes, it is everyone's concern. Or no people respect wealth. I think, for now, Donald Trump will ask for the money. He's a fortune builder. Here's a nice easy way of making a fortune. And she's accepted, so... We now have a wife, and we have fulfilled the ambition to get married. When you fulfill ambitions, they give you rewards. So now we have to pick a new one. Have a son? Yep, I think... That's the one we want. Have a son. And if we have a son, we will get ten piety. Piety? 
I think the sun is godly, apparently. Now let's keep going. We also want to think about possibilities for expansion, because to get more troops and money, we need more provinces. And I think where we want to grow is within, below our liege, because if we went after Ross, for example... Oh. Oh, never mind. If we went after the county of... Huh? Prince Malsnecton, Duke Ma... Oh, this guy owns both. Okay, so forget what I was saying. He owns both. Okay, never mind. We can't go after Murray and Ross because this guy, who's a duke with a lot of troops, owns both of them. So we're just going to have to leave that. We also can't go after these people because they have a lot of troops. That's a lot of troops. They have a lot of troops. And they're also protected by a liege. We need to go after the people who are also under the king. So how many troops do you have? 1.35? You have 1.17. And we have... 917.86. Where have our military gone? Some of our troops have been raised. No, some of our troops have already been lost. I guess there was a fight or skirmish just shortly before this. Is our marshal training troops here, so we should get those troops back, but we can't really do anything at the moment, because we have the weakest army. You are under... This guy is a petty king. He's basically a duke, but he acts like he's a king. Yeah, so I'm not really sure where we can expand at the moment. I tell you what, before we can expand, we do need a better chancellor. Oh, that reminds me, I should have... I should have gone here and checked if there were any claimants I could have married. From the looks of things, they don't appear to be, so it wasn't a massive loss. But we want to fabricate claims in order to expand. And to do that, we need a better chancellor. This guy, Thomas, is not suiting us, but he is the best we have. So, we have to invite someone from abroad. Invite a noble to court. A steward. This will give us a steward. This will give us a holy man. Maybe the steward will be good at diplomacy. Let's do this. A steward named Beefen appears at the court of Earl Donald of Buchan. There he is. And he's terrible, but he's a really good steward. He's a really good steward. That's a lot. Get to that in a minute, Mr. King. Let's sack this guy. He likes us, so this will hurt our reputation. Not our reputation, our relations. But it won't go down to where he'll start to hate us. So let's get this guy. And now we have this really good steward. Guess what we can do? Yes, we can collect taxes. Bring in the money. I have decided to institute the limited crown authority law in the Kingdom of Scotland. Your status as my de jure vassal entitles you to vote on the matter. King Malcolm III of Scotland. So currently... Here's the crown authority. Crown authority is how much authority the crown has over the vassals. So, minimum crown authority, vassals can pretty much do what they want. Low crown authority, vassals can do what they want, but they do have to give their liege some good troops if he calls for them. Medium, the nobility, and the monarch are in a precarious balance. High, the monarch has curbed the rights of the high nobility, and Max, the lords of the realm, can't do anything. The monarch is supreme. So he wants to increase the crown authority. And let me look at the county of Buchan and go to inheritance laws. Because I don't want to stay as Gavelkind, I want to go to primogeniture. So the requirement series has reigned for 10 years. No vassal has a negative opinion of you. The Kingdom of Scotland needs to have High Crown Authority. Or Absolute Crown Authority. This won't push it to either one of those. 
Well, we can still declare war on limited crown authorities. Let's approve that. Get some opinion up with our liege. So we still have a really terrible chancellor. It's okay, I guess, for now. Where do we want to expand? Where do we want to expand? I kind of want to go after this guy, you know. But he has a lot of troops. To be fair, he does have the... To be fair, this count guy has more than he does. So maybe it would be fair for us to go after him. And he's Norwegian, so we don't really care about pissing him off. <laughs> Sorry. By he's a Norwegian, I mean he's not under the Kingdom of Scotland, so... Doesn't really matter if we infuriate him, because if he attacks us, the King of Scotland will defend us. So actually, let's fabricate a claim on... what do we want? Which province has the highest base tax? 62.4, 69.6, Okay, so I think we want Argyle. We want Argyle. Fabricate a claim. On Argyle. And you, seeing as you're not doing anything useful. Can just research cultural tech, I guess. Oh yeah, designated regent. Yeah, that will be my wife. Uh, envious, stubborn, brave, and lustful. You will be the regent. There we are, she's Welsh. So the foreign culture, I think, is making her not like me? No, it doesn't matter. Okay, you have a lot of siblings. Oh. I think I almost married her sister. You also have a 17 year old. Will she come to our court? No, she will not. I can give her a guardian, but I'm not going to. Well, let's carry on the clock. Let's see what's happening in England. Harold Godwinson is fighting against William the Conqueror. 0% war score. 0% war score. And he wants to become exalted among men. Here we go. A farmer told me how his boar had managed to break into his neighbor's hoggery and the result was seven small piglets. Now his neighbor demanded compensation he can't afford and they need me to tell them what to do. Let's see. You know, you can like sort of min-max the system by picking the right choices. So if you want the just straight, you'll get that. If you want gold, you'll get that. Well... 1.93 gold. Just straight is quite good, because stewardship, learning, vassal opinion goes up. But I like to roleplay. I like to pick the options my character would pick, depending on his traits. So what would Donald Trump do? Well, he should pay his neighbour. Keep one piglet each, the rest belongs to me. Yeah, we're arbitrary, we don't care about justice, so we don't want the just straight. Keep one piglet each, the rest belong to me. We get 1.93 gold. Gold, wonderful gold. We'll need this gold to hire mercenaries later on. Let's go a little bit faster. Nothing much is happening at the moment. What is this guy's opinion? This guy hates my guts because he wants the county of Bucan. I can't swear fealty send him a gift of 50 gold to make him like me i'm not going to do that he has a strong claim on the kingdom of scotland do people like this guy let's have a look the duke of moray does not everyone else does so i don't think if the duke of moray raised up in rebellion if duke malsnecton raised up in rebellion i don't think he'd win no factions yet no societies yet. Let's actually 
Oh, who's besieged? Someone's besieged this. William the Conqueror has besieged Middlesex. Yep. William the Conqueror has occupied Westminster, he's occupied London, and he's also occupied St. Paul's. Where are you? You're leading troops in Oxford, so Harold Godwinson is down here. Let's set these guys as important characters so we can follow what's going on with them. You're in Tours. I don't know what that is. What about you, Mr. Hydrada? Have you been defeated? No, you're leading troops. At you're in York at the moment. You're besieging York. Wait, hang on. You're not Hydrada. We have been... Our king wants us to become a commander. Now, usually I'd say yes, of course, but I want to have a child first. I don't want to die in a... Co so I'm going to decline for now. There was a rebellion going on in Wales. This is... Caradog of Dehu Bath. It looks like... It looks... The Dehu Bathan revolt. It looks like a peasant revolt. Yeah, it looks like a peasant revolt in Wales. Anyway, where are you, Mr. Hadrada? There you are. You're in York. Let's make you an important character so we can see what's happening. You are close to death, my friend. No. What about you? Can I... No. Oh. William the Conqueror has imprisoned Harold Godwinson's wife and his entire family. So it looks like Harold Godwinson, just like history, has lost. Shame. I was hoping for some... You know, something new to happen. But William the Conqueror. He's not the Conqueror yet, but it looks like he soon will be. Do, 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 do. The music in this game is great. I do love it. Do, 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 do. of Scotland, people are appointing commanders. I just need this gold to go up. Oh! Oh snap! At the age of 40, Duke William II of Normandy died in battle against Earl something of Wessex. Oh dear, well, I was saying about history, so Duke William is dead. The Norman conquest has ended in white peace. Oh dear, the death of Duke William. Huh, who? This is shocking, this. The death of Duke William has ended the Norman conquest of England. Because obviously, Duke William is the one with the claim. He died in battle against this guy. Earl Sayard of Wessex of House Lockhart. Anglo-Saxon, becomes Marshal, he's focused on a war. Uh, you don't like us because you're patient. You are a patient, lustful, and shy man. William the Conqueror gets taken down by a patient man. Oh dear. You, my friend, will go down in history. Or not, depending on who the victors are. So now... Let's see, so now it's Harold Hadrada versus Harold Godwinson. I just can't believe that happened. William the Conqueror. Patient, temperate, brave, cynical, proud, diligent, ambitious, brilliant strategist, 21 Marshal. Yeah, I think he's a bit overpowered, but, you know, he is William the Conqueror. And I think... On that note, we'll end today's episode. So William the Conqueror is dead. Now Duke Robert II of Normandy is still alive. And he is now the leader of Normandy. He has a lisp, he's envious, he's rough, and he's slothful. What a terrible kid. Who ra who's raising him? Drogo? I just a random lowborn guy called Drogo. Carl Drogo? 
The dragon Drogo? Actually, I think the dragon is called Drogon, but... He's ugly, he's cynical, he's kind, he's ambitious, and he's craven. And you're an elusive shadow, that's a lot of intrigue, dude. So, yes. We've set our council out to try and get a claim on Argyle for use later. The Norman conquest of England has ended after Duke William the Conqueror gets slain in battle. And Harold Hardrado, meanwhile, is still alive. Will he win? No one's winning now, the war score zero. Anyway, guys, I'll see you in the next episode. Take care. Bye.